Intelligence augmentation is the ability to complement our biological natural faculties of reasoning with new ones based on cultural and technological advances. It is something that we have been doing forever. If you think about it, even something as fundamental as speaking and understanding speech is not entirely biological only, as demonstrated by the fact that uh, young children who are found having grown up alone, for example, in the forest, where they survived without being surrounded by other people who would teach them how to speak, even if they are able to start in that process, they will never fully develop it in adulthood. So it is something that we learn, we learn through our society as social animals. Many other animals are social, whether insects or dolphins, uh, or of course uh, dogs or sheep, and they do communicate to a certain extent. However, as far as we know, none of them invented better ways of learning, better ways of sharing knowledge, like for example, reading and writing. Moving from societies that uh, were able to learn and share their knowledge based only on the spoken word to those that multiplied this ability through reading and writing was a gigantic leap. Even today, thousands of years later, we are still benefiting from the wisdom of people who lived in ancient Greece, for example. And that is thanks to the invention of writing. It enabled us to improve enormously both the precision and uh, the volume of information that we were able to translate. The printing press was a similar leap. Before, books and writing and codices in the Middle Ages had to be painfully and individually copied over and over and over by patient and dedicated monks. But after, it was just a question of improving ever more the automation that machines enabled us to do. If you compare the cost of, for example, having a thousand copies uh, of a codex in the Middle Ages with printing a thousand copies of a book, for example, at the end of the 19th century, the difference is probably a millionfold. And of course, with the introduction of electronic communications, this achieved a further huge leap to the point where today we are transmitting the equivalent of thousands of books every second in our digital lives um, when uh, we do video conferencing or when we watch a movie um, or even when uh, we are uh, immediately able to access and start reading any book out of millions that are available uh, in the online source or even in free repositories. The next quantum leap in this uh, long process of improving the tools that allow us uh, to gather data about the world, to codify that data, to systematize it, and to transfer it to others who can take advantage of it, is about to happen as well through brain-machine interfaces of various kinds. These are today experimented and then implemented mostly, almost exclusively, uh, on people who are disabled, who either have lost a limb and through a robotic arm or a leg are 
now able to uh, use that uh, uh, function the, that, that they uh, lost uh, through their biological arm or biological leg. A friend of mine, uh, Nigel, uh, recently uh, died and he was a wonderful symbol uh, of uh, this kind of hybrid evolution of humans and machines. Uh, of working class origin in England, he had a industrial accident, he lost his arm and uh, uh, he was given uh, a fairly advanced uh, bionic arm instead. I remember meeting him the first time at the Singularity University Summit in Budapest many years ago and uh, how wonderfully human uh, the tale that he told was, uh, but how powerful his narrative uh, to the point of bringing all of us to tears uh, and how amazing was the punchline when he would show his robotic arm and turn his wrist 360 degrees around, which of course no human uh, would be able to do. Outputs like this are complemented with inputs where uh, bionic ears and eyes aim to restore senses that we may have lost. And just like Nigel's wrist that uh, can do things that uh, biological wrists can't, our hearing and our vision are going to do more than standard human senses as well. The same is going to happen with cognition. It is fair to say that people who read and write can reason better than those who don't, not because those who can't read and write are different people, but they don't have the tools to collect, analyze, and act on data. Similarly, the people who will have brain implants directly enabling them with the ability of uh, handling data at superior speeds, at a larger bandwidth, at a faster ability of uh, um, massaging the data flow are going to be able to adapt better to the world of tomorrow. This world where artificial intelligence and human societies are evolving together, a world where uh, AIs have a fundamental impact, including decisions that they will be taking autonomously because of the speed requires because of uh, the volume of the data required. And the only way of being in the loop is going to be augmented ourselves. When a jolting world exposes you to degrees of adaptation required superior to your natural abilities, you have two possible choices. To give up because you are unable to overcome those limitations or to embrace that through technological means, those limits indeed are non-existent because through those technological means, you can extend the range of your adaptability to the world whose acceleration in technological change is increasing. So you don't have to throw in the towel. You don't have to give up. You don't have to feel disenfranchised without any power, but you can feel just as before, a protagonist of the jolting world of tomorrow. 
That is why I am so excited to also offer an entire series of courses about jolting technologies that you can enjoy, you can uh, use to your advantage. Talking about artificial intelligence, quantum computing, blockchain and cryptocurrencies, decentralization, and many, many other topics that we have covered in past episodes of The Context. The Jolting Technologies courses are an exciting way of learning and learning to act. Interactive, deeply documented, participatory, community-oriented, updated constantly, modern. And I am awaiting you to join so that you can also take advantage of the sharing of this empowering knowledge. Now, there is also another set of tools on top of intelligence augmentation or alongside it that are available in order to be able to keep the pace with AIs in our jolting world. And in the next episode of The Context, I will tell you about that as well. Thank you.